is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. This morning, and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. It's a Wednesday. It's Wednesday, the 6th of December. You're on the clock with Erin Green, and we await the arrival of Mr. C.A. Nuri. Today is our typical mashup session where we combine the two shows to talk about what's in the news. Definitely talking junk canoe. Ticket chaos, we had the unfortunate um, death of a tourist, bitten by a shark. With all respect to the deceased, to their family and loved ones, we need to be more responsible when we write these articles. A woman attacked by a shark, killed by a shark. Sharks tend to bite people. Let's not apply malice where there is no malice. Let us apply our energy and our resources to creating solutions to prevent incidents like these from happening or to eradicate the risk Remove as much as possible the risk of tourists being bitten by sharks. We, uh, another headline, Harbor Island left in darkness as four generators fail. PTI road traffic proposal never made it to cabinet. 14% of men surveyed reported having sex against their will. These are some of the stories on deck for this morning. I want to start the show with a notice for my sand dollar trivia winners from yesterday. The prize money will be transferred to you by Thursday. This is a message from the central bank. There's been a short delay in the transfer of prize winnings. Please stay tuned. By Thursday, we will deposit all of those into your sand dollar digital wallets. Sand dollar holiday rebates is here. Sand dollar holiday rebates is here and you can get up to $100 back this holiday season when you spend sand dollars, the digital Bahamian dollar at selected merchants. If you're in Nassau, you can present your sand dollar wallet and receipts to Team Sand Dollar at the Sand Dollar Rebate booth located inside Omni at the mall at Marathon. Each receipt must have a total of $50 or more. Additional rules and restrictions may apply. Visit sanddollar.bs forward slash merchant list for a list of merchants. A good morning. There's lots to talk about in the news this morning. What I didn't read was the main headline in today's Tribune. Quote, hate crime, close quotes, attack on trans women. We could talk a bit about that this morning. But I just wanted to start with a quick sort of note. As the news read this morning, I'm certain I heard that Taylor Swift was voted as time person of the year, Taylor Swift, the musician, the pop artist. And I'm thinking to myself, it's 2023, and Taylor Swift is the choice. That's who's been selected as person of the year in the midst of all things going on on the planet. 
it is Taylor Swift that we have selected. I just want to know, because we like to say, oh, the Bahamas is not a real place. Oh, to say, this is just a jokey place. I say it too, this is just a jokey place. But what is happening in the United States of America that Taylor Swift is selected as person of the year? There's something, I don't know, there's something, just something wrong. It's just something up with that. It's 2023. We're still in the midst of the Ukraine-Russian conflict. We're still in the midst of the Benjamin Netanyahu-Hamas conflict. See, the Congo is still on fire. Sudan is on fire. West Africa is still dealing with uh, Europe's heavy hand in economic and political discourse. I mean, there's so many things. We got young Bahamian scientists discovered a way to regenerate coral. Taylor Swift is placing of the year. I just can't believe it. I can't believe it. Fortunately, that's America's story. And although we are cousins, right now that's for them to reckon with. How is it? Everything that happened over the last 12 months, Taylor Swift has been selected. Person of the Year. Good morning, Mr. Neary. Not even okay. One second. Hold on. See, not even a mic. Producer, let's get his mic up. Let's try it again, Mr. Neary. I said, you, you, uh, you didn't even call me this morning to see if I'm okay. You don't know. I said the network's a fire looking for you mm. this morning, mm. Mr. Neary. Mm. You're going to suggest that I just wanted to start the show without you. That's what it's, I'm suggesting. I'm saying it loud. I just wanted to get through as many of the stories I wanted to get through as possible. Well, I think two of the top stories this morning, Mr. Nury, woman attacked by a shark, killed, and the question on the table, is it time for shark season? Are there any other methods, strategies, or policies that we could employ that would allow us to maintain the policies to protect shark populations in the Bahamas and the wider ecological system that they're attached to, right? Is there a solution where we can continue to protect that but still preserve and protect both our tourists and our tourism industry? Yes, I pause just now to consider things, right? Um, globally, we are renowned, known for tourism, being mm -hmm. a tourist product, right? That's sun, sand, and sea. We accept that. That's a, that's a truism. That's what mm -hmm. we do. Uh, globally, we are recognized as having uh, of a kaleidoscope of sea animals, inclusive of the shark. Third, yeah. third largest fish and sea marine hatchery yes. on the planet. And I, and I think that perhaps in this hemisphere, we're number one. Yeah. Right. And then you go back to Australia, which is number one and, and with the barrier, with reef, the barrier yeah. reef and whatever it is. Right. So sharks in general, especially when you think of Shark Week and they, and they descend to the Bahamas and, and this is the locale mm -hmm. for Shark Week. Right. And all the videos and TV shows and, 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 and exposés is based in the Bahamas. We make millions, tens of millions of dollars based on our shark industry of not fishing for shark, mm -hmm. right? Um, when you have them juxtaposed to the sunside and sea and, and then the shark week and the shark tourism, uh, we need to find a balance. Yeah. And not necessarily hunt, hunting for shark could right. be that balance. So instead of saying there needs to be a, a shark um, um, start, uh, like a season, right? perhaps we need to have a shark conclave and see the impact these recent shark attacks is having on the number one industry. Yeah. How can we mitigate? What is the next step? What, what can we do in terms of, is it that we feed the sharks too close to shore? Mm -hmm. Can we have a particular section of the ocean, this big Atlantic Ocean we're in, to say, well, this is where the shark feeding will be, right? Mm -hmm. um, do we need to put um, uh, lifeguards on, on the beach? What are those nets? Right, do we need to net off particular 
alcoves and, yes. and, and parts of the beach to or protect. create alcoves right. and, and then net uh, uh, for parts of the beach. Right. You know? uh, instead of going from A to Q, we need to have a shark season again. Right. Um, now, turtle is something different. We just need to have a turtle season so we can have curry turtle again. That's just different. No, you could travel to other parts of the world where the turtle populations are far stronger. I just want to travel as far as East Street. No, man. Like, you ever been to Suriname? No, but I have been to East Street. I've had the nicest peanut turtle peanut soup in Suriname. I haven't had turtle since they changed to uh, make it illegal. That's because you're a good citizen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I get I mean, I mean, that is good that you're a good citizen. Yeah. It's, it's not you good. you ever taste shark and rice? Not when shark was illegal. Okay, but I mean, that you ever taste before? Yeah. It's good, though. It's good. Shark is sitting there. It's better than, better than grouper. I mean, it's sweet. I would hasten to say both of them taste equally bad when they out of season. Like crawfish. Yeah. All of them taste horrible. They upset your stomach. I see we have a caller on the line. Good morning, caller. Good morning, Aaron, and your guests. Listen here. Yes, sir. When you go in the water, mm -hmm. that's their territory. Mm -hmm. You got you to gotta understand that. And sharks, sometimes they come in because they're hungry and they're looking for food. And I can tell you, if that was either a bull shark or a tiger shark mm -hmm. that knock off or knock the, the surf board, it only could be a tiger shark or a bull shark. And all the, uh, the other ordinary chat doesn't do that. I got you. And so that's the problem right here. And they can need to because once they pay that taste blood, he might still be looking around out there. You don't know that. Yeah. And so it's not you can do. Once you go in that water, and you in the area. So that's yes, all I have to say with that. A bull shark or a tiger shark. And I'm sorry. And so we got to be, you know, you just got to, one time the Goodman's made, there were three big sharks coming up and down. Yeah. They're coming in, there's nothing you can do. Absolutely. Thank this, you. Thank you very much. This is one of the reasons why, this is one of the proponents of the argument that there should be lifeguards on all public beaches as long as beaches are open, Right. There should be a schedule for beach openings and closings. The beach is open at 7 a.m. They close at 7 p.m. In, say they close at 7 p.m. in the winter. They close at 9 p.m. in the summer. We assign lifeguards trained with binoculars. And see, you can't assign lifeguards like you assign security officers, right? A lifeguard has to be fit. A lifeguard has to be able to attain the physical standards for the job. They have to have great eyesight. They have to not be afraid of the water. But it's something that you do for your citizens in an archipelagic nation. But surely it's something that you do for tourists if you're inviting them for sun, sand, and sea. Let's go to this caller and then we talk about insurance. Do we have a duty of care to the tourists to make sure the beach is Yes. Shot? We have but, a duty of care to Bahamians who live here first and foremost. Like the, the caller earlier said, that's the shark domain. You have no duty of care. You go you swim on your own risk. No. No. No? You have a duty of care because you invite people to go in the ocean. But not just that. You have a duty of care to your citizens. Right? Let's go to the call and then we get back to that. Good morning, caller. Yes, good morning. I have a solution. Yes, sir. Right? Mm -hmm. It's a very simple solution. We need to expand harbor control, even if we have to employ more persons mm -hmm. in those harbor uh, boats. I think the police controls that, I'm not sure. That's all we need to do. We beef up controls, harbor patrols in each area, not having one boat going from one, where, one place to the other. We should have sufficient boats to be in the area of Cummins Bay, situated there, Sanders Beach, situated there, and the harbor by the bridge, we need, if we have them available and they are there on standby, then that could really uh, be a great assistance. Now, the, the lifeguard, yeah, that's additional stuff. But mm -hmm. on the waters, we should have patrol on the waters, if the police control, uh, patrols are there, to prevent other issues with like the ski incidents and all that stuff, to maintain law and order. I've been on the beach the other day in Long Wharf, and these guys were right close to the shore, where the people are in the water. Any incident can happen. So the solution is to beef up the controls and make sure that you have a harbor boat 
in every facility on standby, and that will be good coverage for those beaches. That's what you need, the manpower on the water all the time. And it's jobs. Right. It's jobs, right? That's right. Not only... Is, and it's, it's an easy fix. Yeah. And we could have... See, then you could have multiple issues being addressed at the same time, right? Yes, I, I agree with you, my dear. Avoiding incidents, uh, people get hit with boats. I mean, in charge, I'm just a local Bahamian who's thinking about why these people are being paid, who's supposed to be thinking about these things. Mm -hmm. Why are we going over this? I mean, to be honest with you, if I was in charge, uh, somebody can be fired. Because there's no way we have these incidents, and we don't have proper coverage. Yes, sir. It's ridiculous, man. It is frustrating. Yes, absolutely. Okay? Yes, and sir. I hope the minister and those who are responsible, you guys start thinking, man. You Th just can't sit there and be a member of parliament. Thank you, caller. Absolutely. Mr. Nuri, um, to the caller's point, we have all kinds of surveillance systems and programs that are in operation right now that could be used, right, if only to provide data for people on the water. Why are we not using radar and sonar to determine if we have clusters of sharks moving through or if they're migrating through? Why aren't we using radar and sonar to determine the... This is like to say cr cloud coverage, but the shark coverage in the harbor near the beaches. Why don't we have people on boats, on patrol, moving through the water, uh, companion to the charters? Charters are going out diving. Why don't you have? Why aren't charter companies now required, as a matter of policy or law, to have teams accompanying them to track and? clear the area, ensure that the area is safe, to send signals to divers that it's time to move, time to get up out the water. If we're going to be serious, let's be serious. We can't be like Time Magazine electing Taylor Swift as the person of the year. We got to get serious. Ms. Nuri. I hear you and your foolishness and the caller, <laughs> right? You all think we's like some kind of first world super superpower though. United States don't have these things. You know what? We have Thomas has the and I'm exaggerating of course. The most beaches in the world. Of course again I exaggerate. I mean, Hold on, let me finish this point. Yeah. Islands, rock See, keys. The point I'm trying to make is we cannot have enough boats to police the entire Bahamas. Of course we can. No, we can't. Yes. If United States can't do it and they have less beach than us, right? And they say that like, they can't afford it. Us, who are dependent on, on donations to survive. That's all right. You know? that's, like local and, that's like local and, and, and central government fighting. But you have the states. The states are telling the federal government, you want us to patrol borders. But, and, and waters, that's in your purview. Give us some more money. And they have the money. We, they, had, we got the, the money. Point, to the point of the United States, printing dollars now just for fun. We, we, but let's go to real talk, right? I understand the concern. And all. I'm not saying that the concern is not warranted, mm -hmm. right? It took us, it's taken us a while to even purchase the boats that we do have, mm -hmm. right? One of these boats is supposed to be able to... Uh, uh, patrol that entire western beach. Uh -huh. Now the call is suggesting that we put a boat in every <laughs> enclave there. It can't happen. Yeah, but so why, why entertain so, such folly talk? So I appreciate what you're saying because certainly I don't have the money. We Aaron can, Green, tax you. taxpayer, does not have the <laughs> money. Tax you some more. But you know who does have the money? Who have the money? Atlantis. You want? Bahama. The people who are integrally and inherently tied to the problem you know should be and and i, I like that inherently a part of you the know solution. what these big hotels did they dredge the water to create a beach inside an enclosed beach a man-made beach each one of those hotels have a man-made beach oh that's even better because right? what you're suggesting to me the outside beach that's the government Active? Is it keep they, them in the inside They keep beach. the inside See, beach. I mean, that sounds... I come to you right now, call it, don't go anywhere. Because if you tell me that a hotel altered the landscape to create a protected beach for their guests, then you suggest to me... That we do, a, do it for, for behaviors too? No, that we need to determine whether the alteration of the landscape created an environment where the sharks 
can't feed themselves and now trying to feed on humans, which would mean to me that those same entities have an obligation folly talk. Just folly to entertain. Talk. But let's go to the caller. Yes, folly talk. Good morning, caller. Aaron, good morning, CA. Good I morning. hope you're doing well. Yes, sir. You know, thank you. I take um, exception, Ombridge, to the report that was on one of the on the national station, which said that the that the victim may have contributed to her death. I think that was wrong. Mm -hmm. Because if you and I, I don't know anything about shark. If I go in the water and I see a shark, first thing I can do is run. You know, she said, oh, because of her movement in the water, looking at the shark eye. Who can look at anybody's shark and any shark eye and all kind of foolishness? You know, if I, I don't know anything about shark. See, do you know anything about shark? How to interact with shark? You're supposed to talk to them telepathically. No, you're supposed uh -huh. to punch the shark in the nose. You, you're supposed to punch the shark in the nose? What if yeah. I miss? Do uh -huh. I punch him in the mouth? That's, <laughs> that's why I wear I mean, tennis when I go in the water. Careful. You have to be careful of the message that you yeah. are sending out there. Yeah, the messaging is very important. What she warned about sharks. sharks being in the water and how to respond in case of a shark attack? Mm -hmm. uh, was, is that is something that's... A, that will now be on the hotels. Uh, um, Excellent uh, point. Excellent you know? point. Let me, I want to engage. Right. I asked a question earlier. Um, is Bohemian beaches safe? I mean, when I say safe, safe from sharks. And you mentioned, should that be a warning now moving forward? The question now is, should this be some kind of label on our tourism product that if you come to the Bahamas, you could be a victim? Of a shark attack. Is that where we are? <laughs> why, see, that's not a good tourism why you, logo. But why you have to no, see? I, said, I, mean, I, you know, like accidents can occur anytime, any place, anywhere. We don't know. I mean, it's just so unfortunate. Just the other day, the, you know, the, the uh, Mr. Scriven was just standing uh, under that big thing. I mean, out of nowhere, the, you know, it, it just dropped. The, the, it was standing all the time, and it just waited for him to come underneath there for it to drop. You know, yes, and so accidents can. You know, happen, but of, at all times we must be aware of our surrounding, and like they say, to be forewarned is it's to, to be, be forearmed. forearmed. You know. Thank but, you very much, Colin. Um, Aaron. Yes, sir. Uh, just one more thing. Yes, but sir. I think this is a good opportunity for somebody to maybe come up with an app or something like that in order to track these these shots or do something. I mean, we could do apps or all kind of things. So maybe we need an app for shark for, 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 for shark sighting or something like that, so that you know. Yeah, to use the sonar and radar, you know, so that or something. At the very least, uh, okay. charter operators and boat captains um, and tour providers can access real time information to make cogent and sensible and responsible decisions, right, about their activities and in all of their waivers. Uh, let's go to the next call, producer. In all of their waivers, there should be things that indicate your trip may be canceled because of sharks. Like, that's force majeure. That's like act of God. Do you have a patrol to lock up all the sharks because they refuse to leave the harbor for activity? People must understand that. Yes, let's go to the next caller there. Yes, sir. Go ahead, caller. Can you hear me? Caller going once. Caller going twice. Sorry we missed you Caller, Mr. Newry, somebody asked you if you ever tasted crush before? I'm not sure. Say no. The answer is no. No. Then text us and tell us what crush is. Please text us. I have a text that says there are several police boats uh, at the police college now still in plastic. Hmm. What you mean still? They brand new. But you could put them plastic in the water. You, could just, you don't need to take it out of the plastic and put it in the water. I hope they're not mm. waiting for somebody to take them out of the plastic. Yeah. Plastic could go in the water. Good morning, caller. How you all doing? Good, thank you. Yeah, would, would it be all right if they would allow us to eat these sharks? No. Kind of, kind of like control the population because if we continue to protect them, uh, they they will migrate and migrate and they will continue to out. They will basically outnumber us. What if I they, what if I told you that sharks? What if I what if we found out that sharks were more important to the planet's ecological health than humans were? Oh, well, if, 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 that were the, if that's the case, then we might as well stop living and just give up the whole planet to the sharks. Sharks don't come on land, though. 
I'm not sure when last Once you, you had a on land, you land, land attack by a shark. No, no, but, but, but what I'm saying is we would like to enjoy the water. And if, 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 if we could control them, would that affect the ecology? I mean, how important they are? I mean, suppose you have a million sharks just in the water. Is, 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 is that fine? I mean, is that all right with you guys? Now, let, no, let, no, no, no. Let, let, let me ask him a question. No, I, I like this caller. Yeah, like no, no, no. These are caller. very interesting questions. There are people who say we have too many human beings in the world, as culling the population. Just go in there and say, there's too much young children here, just get all of them here. Just control the, the human population. Well, well, you know, I argued this before to you. If you cannot afford to take these children, why have so much of them? So you support the I culling. I support the idea of not being able to allow people to have a bunch of children they can't take care of because the state but has the shark, to take okay, care of them. Okay, good point. But you know the shark can take care of its children. The shark don't yeah, have a yeah, problem. Yeah, I know, but then, but then the shark is going to eat us if we happen to fall in the water. Let's still suppose you're on the boat. But, the, boat but the, shark is doing its, the shark is doing its job of making sure its children could eat. Yeah, I and just agree. following that logic. My thing is this. Mm-hmm. Can we ask the environmental community to make a determination, right? of what a culling protocol would look like. How many sharks can we cull without detrimentally impacting the ecological system? Because here's the problem. We got plenty of money in this town. We spend very little of it determining the, the, the benefit, the function, and the purpose of all of the ecological elements here. We want to sell up all the we want to sell up all the uidic, sell up all the aragonite. We have no idea how aragonite and uidic sand operates in terms of land formation, in terms of existing land stabilization. But we're ready to sell it all. I think that we can cull responsibly if we take the time to determine what the impact of our actions are. I have a text that says, "Do not punch the shark in the nose." You'll only get the shark upset. Go for the eyes yeah, or the, the guilt. But, 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 but okay. what I'm saying is, you know, tourists like to play with these animals. They they probably don't know that we have sharks that like to bite, especially people, you know, if, 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 you, if you're menstruating, you're in trouble. Listen, this is why we have to get serious about what it is that we're doing. Okay. I want one of these jobs. Uh, you know what I want my job to be? In the morning, I tell the tourists what they can do and what they cannot do. That's what my job, that's what I want to do. I Daddy want know. every morning I can let you know, buddy, if your men straighten, you ain't going on the shark dive with us. I apologize. You could get a refund because it's mother nature. Yeah. Shmir just started by surprise. Yeah, with no cuts. And if you get cut in the activity, you got to be responsible and get out the water. Don't be playing with us. No, you can't get a refund. It's the risk that you take. These are the things we got to start doing. Wake it out, Aaron. Wake it out, please. Listen, I, I drove past. Yes, sir, I drove past. I drove behind this uh, Jeep. You know, we rent these Jeeps to the tourists self-drive. So the tourists could drive the Jeep with no tour guide in it driving, right? Yeah. The tourist driving the Jeep and he have his leg hanging outside, swinging outside the Jeep. No seat belt on. It's the Bahamas. I drive past the bay. I say, hey, sir, please put on your seat belt. Do you not see how the people them just ran the light by you and you ran it with them? The bike, the tourist cuss me. Of course. I want you all to understand this. Take my oats to the billy goat and not to that hospital because my oats ain't feeding him. Of course we got to feed him. No. Well, He's yeah. a tourist. See, but this is the problem. We take on the risk. We take on the responsibility. We have to get serious. And the tourists will not get serious if we are not serious. We have another text here. that Mr. Nuri, swimmer, as fascinating as we find them, they are wild animals. I once was on a diving trip with a group of white tourists. One person in the water shouted, shark! (laughs) Because they saw a shark and they said, it's a bull shark. All the others jump in the water to see it. And guess who stayed in the boat? You can't blame a shark for doing what shark does. That's right. You cannot. How do you get mad at a shark for biting things in the water? Uh, this was reminding us that tourists get bitten by gators in Florida. And no, there's no heavy alarm. Gators do what gators do. 
That's right. And you, you didn't even go to see the gator. <laughs> you was just chilling. In fact, when, if a gator uh, attacks you, the, the authorities say, leave the gator alone. If you see a gator come out of the water and walk in, your job is to leave the gator and come out of the space. That's right. Not to respond and as say, we gotta get rid of the gators. As quickly as possible. Not to say, I gotta get rid of the gators. And please don't say, I'm a human, I have rights. Not to the, the crocodile or the shark. In, in paradise, you do. Good morning, Mr. Munnings. How are you doing? Good morning, Aaron. How are you this morning? I'm good, thank you. As a business person, what do you think the balance is, right? Because we've got... So, the two business sectors that have to find balance here. One sector is the tourism sector. We invite tourists here. We tell them, go in the water, go look at the shark. Maybe you could take a picture with the shark. And then we have the uh, seafood industry. We have the fishing industry. And although fishermen are not allowed to catch shark right now, fishermen rely on a healthy nursery and ecosystem to produce continued stock of fish for them to make money off of. And the shark's presence is a part of that ecosystem. So how do, what, what's your opinion? How do we bring balance to this discussion? Because the tourists want to see the shark, but they need the shark to be managed. And the fishermen need the shark, they need the shark to be managed. How do we balance this? But definitely, we'll take a look at it um, in regards to the Bahamas itself. Um, we sell a destination. We're selling sun, sand, and sea. And tourists are coming into the Bahamas because of the proximity. And they're coming in because we have 24, almost 24 hours sunlight, you'll say, CA. So they're coming into the shores to swim and to enjoy the beaches and so forth. And I think it is our, it is, we take on the risks and the responsibility because now we are marketing this particular product. I see an opportunity also for the government to expand itself in regards to hiring some young, young men because we're surrounded by water, um, like how you have lifeguards, but we'll actually have something that is similar to the, the coastal kind of people that, that monitors the coastal areas where people swim. And we can have those little chartered boats and so forth to be in those areas just to indicate whether or not there is a shark sighting or so, so forth like that. We don't have that many shark sightings, though. We do, because in our area, bear in mind now, the, the sharks, they considered the U.S. They had a study and they said that the sharks weren't, um, we, we weren't able to kill the sharks anymore because Chinese wanted them for the shark fin suit, for the, for the fin. So by not regulating them, in a sense, what happens is they breed at an alarming rate because of the, the, the conducive of the Where water. Where you getting the science from? This is, this is Fox. You can Google it. I, mean, I know it. science, if, man. If there's nobody catching the sharks, it's, let's just say, you know these sharks are going to breed. The waters are hot. They're kind of great for these animals to breed. So if nobody's catching them, have you been to Exuma or any fishing trip or anything like that, see, Nurit, in order to just throw you the You know these and see what sharks is migrating sharks. They go all the way to Jamaica and, and Trinidad and come back to see, the Bahamas. That's and another, then, and then you have some with just Mr. literally Mr. stay home. Pause. I, I, I will interrogate that. <laughs> these deep water sharks. Hold on. I will Are they all around you, see? I want to interrogate that, right? What you said, they're migrating sharks, right? They know they, it's not even like they just show up in the Bahamas and say, oh, Look how warm it is. We ain't never here. leaving the bomb. No, but there's two elements. You Do have to I have the there. right to kill the shark while it's migrating through the Bahamian waters? Have you ever tasted shark shark meat before? Not while it's yes. illegal. It's nice, eh? It tastes like group yeah. No, <laughs> it does not. Maybe when it's illegal, I don't know. I don't eat it then. <laughs> it tastes really good. I can lie. But listen, no, seriously. Uh, we have to consider the tourists and, and the protection of not just the tourists, but also the Bahamian people at large that are going to go to the beaches because sometimes they get a really hot. Let's put hot. them primarily. They get kind of hot. Let's put Bahamians primary in the hierarchy of protection. But let's talk about this. Let's talk about the equipment, the lady, the, no, the tourism product equipment. I want to bring the lady. You mean uh, the uh, kayak? The kayak. No, the paddleboard. 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 Should a paddleboard be used in deep water like that, right? The shark was um, almost a mile out. No, no one tends to swim with that. It's a mile out. Shouldn't there be a rule, perhaps, say, hey, if you're going to go a mile out, you can't be on no paddle board. Well, you can, I think that we can have some signs or indications. Then there wouldn't be no, no, no shark attack. Then, then this whole, I mean, whole debate is moot. That's, so the that, ordeal no, that's would not, not have, you're saying the ordeal would have not happened? No, no, no. no, no I've no. seen a footage just the yeah. other day, and they showed it, um, I think there was a shark, a homage shark. 
that that came almost on shore by the Monaco area. You pet those things. No, no, no. Listen, you no, no. stop, stop, no, no, no. stop. No, no, no. no, no. Pet, how many no, no, no. What shark can you pet? The nurse. None. The nurse shark. No, don't pet. No, no, the nurse shark you can pet. Mr. Ian Munnings. They, they actually have a producer. Tourist, put his mic on pause. Tourist attraction. <laughs> producer, put his in mic on. Exuma, where the nurse sharks are there, and people go and touch the sharks. Mr. Producer Ian, give me a moment here, dear audience. I'd like to apologize. Do not. Let me repeat. Do not take your children in the ocean to go pet sharks. If you go on an excursion, a tour, or an activity where you have been invited to go and pet sharks, I'm going to need you to ask for the business license of the enterprise. I'm going to need you to ask for some form of insurance, a, a, a proof of insurance. Right? I'm going to need you to sit and walk through the waiver. And if they don't have a waiver, first of all, I, I can tell you, don't sign the waiver if they have one. But if they don't have a waiver, do not take the risk lightly. Mr. Munnings, there may be people who are running activities where they invite people to come and pet sharks. Not any shark, a particular kind of sharks. The nurse sharks, the nurse sharks, primary food is the conch. Listen, if we didn't, I, you called me a conch yesterday. <laughs> Let's just, be, we, we want to be responsible and let people know, listen, this is a, a trained, guided activity that Mr. Munnings is talking about. Don't be out there trying to play hero, but oh, you're going to go pet shark. Good morning, caller. Hey, Aaron. Hey. Morning to you and your guest. Morning, morning. Morning. Good. I just want to bring a little balance to this because... I know you guys, uh, or you, you and your guests are not uh, 100% uh, say fishermen or sports fisher. I've been a sports fisherman for probably uh, more than 20 years and grew up uh, in the family island. So let me offer a little bit of balance. Mm -hmm. have, have there ever been an attack in the Bahamas before with a tourist on a paddle board but prior to this? No. Not, re no. not reported. Right. So, I mean, I don't know of any, and I don't think uh, we know of any. So it's very, very, very remote. Would mm. this happen again? I think in the next 10, 15, 20 years, maybe not. Okay. Which, I think what happened in that incident, and, and most scientists will tell you, paddle boards look very similar to turtles. Uh, there's a tur site, um, uh, certain type of shark that feeds on t uh, turtles, mm -hmm. and those are hammerheads. And you can imagine a paddleboard looking from the bottom of the uh, water column, looking up at the bottom of the paddleboard. It looks like a turtle on top of the water. Mm -hmm. And using the paddle on each side as they paddle along the paddleboard, it looks very similar to a turtle using its fin mm -hmm. paddling along. Mm -hmm. um, the report was that the shark grabbed the paddleboard and pulled it under the water, it, you know, threw off the board. So it's very likely that the shark, you know, not seeing very well, mistaken uh, the tourists for a uh, turtle. turtle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that possibly would happen. But shark attacks generally um, have to be incited or caused. Either you, uh, you talk about menstruating. I don't think a 44-year-old lady was menstruating, but I think it was, she was mistaken for a turtle, and it could have been a boat shark. Boat shark is extremely aggressive. They will bite a, a motor off on a boat. Uh, a, that hangs off a boat. You know, they're very, very aggressive. They tend to be in uh, areas where they're uh, fe feeding on fish. But in the area of off uh, Goodman's Bay and Sandals, that area has a lot of activity from jet skis and boats and stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, it all, it, it's like a perfect storm. You know, the, the weather probably drove those, f you know, the fish that they were feeding on into that area mm -hmm. because of the weather. And the shark probably came in and feeding and she just happened to be out there. So is it unsafe to paddle board? No. Is it unsafe to paddle board a quarter mile offshore, half mile offshore if the weather's right and flat? No. So I'm just saying this is a rare incident. I don't think we'll ever have this again. And the shark scientists and the scientists you talk to, they will tell you that this is really, really, really rare. Now, you, you go out to Rose Island on the ocean flats and you, where people feed sharks and you're diving out there, I would say you better be aware. Mm -hmm. Better be aware. If you go to um, um, Tiger Beach and you're menstruating, then you're asking for it. Mm -hmm. um, so 
there are, I'm saying if, if in the Bahamas, is, there's no reason to be fearful of shark if you're using your common sense in New York Beach. You know, I've, I've swam many times on the beaches around Nassau and see the sharks in the water right off Goodman's Bay. They're just curious animals. But, you know, if you're feeding in, uh, feeding or fishing in that area, then don't have people swim in those areas. Let, so me, that's it. let, yeah. me, let me engage you and ask you a question. Um, I have a number of texts who are saying that we are chummying up the waters, right, because yeah. of the shark feeding. Is that a major concern? Because I think that the shark feeding is done in the ocean and not necessarily near the beach, right? Well, I want to know from like your experience what's happening. Chumming, yeah, chumming takes near the reef, takes care near the, the shark lives, are, you know, they like the reef to feed on. It's a, it's a predatory, or that's where their preys are. So if you're chumming near the reef, then you don't want people swimming in that area if you're chumming. Because what you're doing is you're getting the shark excited. There's, there's blood in that fish. And, and they are in a feeding mode. So you can easily get mistaken for a, a fish. Not that they're coming for you specifically. Sharks are really curious. They're not interested. Uh, most sharks, uh, people will tell you, uh, uh, I've spoken to people whose boat has been overturned. They've been in the ocean for, say, 24 hours, 48 hours, floating in the water. There was an incident. Some guys uh, were off East Nassau there, and their boat sank. And they were trying to swim back to Nassau. I think it took them like maybe 18 hours before they came ashore. And at night, the shark, they said they were hitting the sharks in their noses and punching them uh, to get away from them. Because the shark couldn't figure out what they were. They was just trying to determine, what you know, uh, the, what is this that, that, that's in the water at this hour? And they were trying to determine whether or not it's a prey. Now, I got so, two more questions for you. Yeah. Mr. Munnings? Uh, my question is that, do you think that we should start catching the sharks? I, 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 believe, I believe we should start, we should look at the regulations again, because what happened is I think we've gone overboard uh, with uh, banning shark fishing altogether. So what happened? You have uh, this uh, supply of sharks that now have really gotten out of balance, because shark really don't have a, if you think about it, they are the top of the feeding uh, chain, right? So we normally would catch shark uh, and for whatever reason, behemoths, some behemoths eat it. Some people will catch the shark and, and, and actually, you know, destroy it. I would recommend that. But if we have a season, you know, a couple of months to catch some shark, I think it's a good thing. Now, to do shark fin, I'm totally against that. Um, but I think we have to look at regulating, uh, you know, having an open season because I think the population has really gotten out of a hand because the Bahamas has banned shark fishing, I think, for the last three, four years now. M more so than that, more than that. I think we need to rec reconsider that. Last question uh, before uh, I let you go, and I want to thank you very much for calling. I yeah. often notice people fishing on the beach on Montague, on Montague Beach, right? Yeah. On the, yeah, on the dovetails. Is that yeah. attracting sharks to the beach side? Absolutely, absolutely. And where the fishermen clean fish there at Montague, you see all that fish, where they throw all that fish guard and the fish refuge? Yeah. That is a feeding ground for sharks at night, um, and I and and particularly I would not swim out there in the twilight hours uh, beyond the, the shoreline, beyond where they have the, those um, um, uh, coins they call yeah. them to protect the, the sand on the beach. Don't You're asking for it. Don't you know? tell the sharks, that. but there's a group of dedicated people that call themselves the Solar Bears. And they go out to Montague early in the morning before the sun comes up, and they be in the water. But they're not way out. Uh, no, no, they're right in, right in, right in. <laughs> See, the shark's yeah, polite. The shark's yeah, they, disgusting. They, yeah, I, but there again, have you ever had a shark attack there? Have I'm, you ever known of one? N not that I know of. I know that somebody, there was a shark. We, here's what we know. There was a either like a sunfish or a, a, you know, one of the fish with the, a big fish with a, a, a long pointed nose. And the gentleman went into the water and tried to catch it, and he yeah. broke his finger. My it's niece saw that. Okay, it's called a pinfish. You're probably talking about. But yeah, but the, the, like I'm saying, the, 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 most of the incidents happen with tourists around the reefs, where mm -hmm. they are snorkeling around the reefs, like the little young lady out at uh, um, Rose Island. Yeah. She was menstruating, and she was out at uh, you know in that area where that's open ocean flats, and those fish, those sharks are coming in to feed on the reef. Yeah. So, like, if you go to anywhere the barrier reefs are, and you coming right off the, the ocean, 
Sharks are going to be in those areas feeding because that's a normal area to feed. And I wouldn't recommend, if you're diving in that area, you have to be experienced. But we got hundreds of people who dive, you know, spear fishermen mm-hmm. all around the Bahamas and there's no incident. Absolutely. Now, just let, leave it to you. Hammerhead does not, uh, the hammerhead shark do not um, uh, eat or, or find human as a prey. Mm-hmm. You can swim with them. That's, that's a proven fact. I know. I w- I'd like to take your word for it, sir. I'm not taking Mr. Munning's word for it, though. I'll take your word I for it. Ask them about the nurse shark. No, sir. The nurse shark, the same thing. They don't, they don't bother humans. They feed on cr- they're crustacean feed. <laughs> last, <laughs> last one, sir. Last question. Yeah. The, is it the, the bull shark is also a freshwater shark? Yeah, they can. They have. Uh, they have the ability to. Um, uh, they have, a, as they say, they have. They can come into uh, a freshwater estuary or salt water back into salt water. They have that ability. They are popular in Florida and extremely aggressive. So I could extremely aggressive. Okay, I could. I could accidentally find one of them in a creek in Andres. Well, you can find them in a creek in Andres. I guarantee you, where they're freshwater running into salt water, that's where they love to be. They feed okay. on mangroves. And so they are very, very aggressive. Like I say, they'll bite a ninja uh, or a pole that you have in the water. Extremely aggressive shot. So, um, again, if you are swimming in the mangroves uh, around Andros, I warn you to be very careful, you know. Thank you. Uh, but, yeah, I'll leave that with you. Thank you very much, sir, for your contribution. Again, we're trying to find a balance, right? To identify all the stakeholders, the fishermen, the tourists, the Bahamian, and the shark. And how do we bring balance to the situation? Well, clearly there's a need for a conversation. Yeah. And, and the stakeholders need to bring all of us to the fore because behemoths are terrified and now we are, are reacting to that, that, yeah. that, 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 that fear. And most of all, we're concerned for the number one industry in the country, tourism and our guests. Anyway, gee whiz, it's Christmas. We're going to a break. When we get back from the break, I'm going to ask these two gentlemen in the studio, why are Bahamian men like the bull shark? It's war time. You stay tuned <laughs> on the clock with Aaron Green. We'll be right back. Boy, you know what's going down tomorrow? No, babe, what happening? Joe bringing the knife to school? He could do Junior in for war. Boy, he fooled with Joe, girl. Mother sick. And you know Junior don't bark down for nothing. So that means he got a big fight tomorrow. So whose side you want? Side? I try and stay in school, not Simpson Pen. We gotta tell somebody about this fight. Tell somebody? I ain't no snitch. I mean, cool, you know. Boy, if you so cool, then you need to stay in school and stay out of the fight. Yeah, but if I don't hang on Joe's side, how many boys coming for me next? All right, so we definitely gotta tell somebody. We gotta prevent the fight. what I say? I don't want nobody call me snitch. We could just call a crime. Stoppers, you could report what you know, and nobody gotta know it's you. So how did it work? All you gotta do is call them, or you text them through the crack crime Bahamas are, and nobody can know it's you. Then the police come looking for me for more info, and when they finish with them, Joe them coming looking for me. Uh. Uh-uh. When you call Crime Stoppers, the calls go directly to Miami, and they don't ask nothing about you. Then you can get the pen from them, and they can claim a reward later using that same pen. Plus, everything's scrambled, so nobody can read what you said. Calls three two eight eight four seven seven from Nassau, or two four two three hundred eight four seven seven from the Family Islands. The Grand Bahama News is available every Tuesday in the. Nassau Guardian. You can buy your local paper at Freeport Convenience Stores, Western Bakery, DeGregory's Fine Foods, and Bellevue Gifts. Now is the time to reach your Grand Bahama market with affordable packages, including print and digital. Call GB News Sales Representative Kavandre at 822-6717 or message him on WhatsApp for ad rates. Classified ads are now available every Tuesday as well. Keep up with everything Grand Bahamian every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. The Water and Sewage Corporation celebrates you this holiday season. <laughs> Make your bills merrier and brighter with our exciting holiday promotion. Pay your bill in full between December 1st and 15th, 2023, and you'll automatically be entered for a chance to win amazing prizes. Simply visit any Water and Sewage Corporation location or our social media pages to find out more about the promotion and how you can participate. This holiday season, let us make your bills merrier and brighter. Happy holidays from the Water and Sewage Corporation. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas.
Good morning and welcome back to On The Clock with Erin Green. I'm sorry we waited so long to take that break, but I'm just so thankful for all of the callers. In particular, the fisherman called in and shared some information with us so we could have a more reasonable interrogation of the matter at hand and the decisions in front of us. I think that the most important thing is that we have to find balance. We can't eradicate the shark, and even if we do open up a shark season, even if we lift the prohibition entirely, we have to be responsible and manage the way that we cull or fish for sharks, remove sharks from the ocean. What you find is that most fishermen are very responsible. Responsible and professional fishermen understand the role of the shark in the ocean and only, only kill sharks that are menacing, right? Either the boat, menacing them while they're working, and that's not just the first time the shark shows up, not just the second time the shark follow them to the next spot, but they see that there's a persistent track, right? The, the fishermen are responsible about their role as caretakers and stakeholders, you know, in, in the ocean and ocean life. Mr. Newey. I am here. We talked the whole hour about shark. In the next hour, let me tell you what I want to talk about. What you want to talk about? Junkanoo tickets. Okay, we talk about Junkanoo tickets. Tomorrow we talk about why the Junkanoo. I want to talk about why the Junkanoo. We talk about Bernard Boy tickets too. Woo! You want get, you want go? You buying? But I mean, it's two hundred dollars. I I got you. I have an idea. Okay, I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. An idea. I have an idea. The biggest concert of the season. Bigger than Junkanoo? Can't be bigger than Junkanoo. There's a there's an African sensation. He brings thousands of people. To I am the African sensation. <laughs> is he bringing a thousand Africans with him? <laughs> well, there's a tourism is up. <laughs> is this going to be a fella cootie? Anyway, we're all out of time, guys. We're going to pick this conversation up on the next half of the break, on the next side of the break. By then, hopefully, I can figure out what this idea is. I may be going to see Bunna. Bunna boy. I don't take last, last, don't you, Last, last. I don't take last. That's good. I have the idea. Okay, then. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Guardian Radio AM with C.A. Newry is up next. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Nassau, Bahamas.